I saw this kit of LEDs rather cheaply on e on Amazon, so I decided to get some. They threw in this little guy. It's ten LEDs in one little nice box kit. When I put this into a circuit, I discovered it wasn't all the same color. It actually ranged from blue, green, yellow, and then red. And that sounded to me like it was for a meter. So that got me thinking, what could I use a meter for? For experimentation purposes, I plugged this into 10 GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi. As with all projects that I work on, I first create some example code to get a particular object to function the way I, I will need it to for my project. First, with this bar graph, I wrote a C program that turns each light on and off one at a time. So now I know I can turn these on one at a time. The next thing I wanted to know is what could I use a meter for? I was googling VU meters and Raspberry Pi and the first thing that popped up was uh, on GitHub called PI VU meter. It was also all in C and it's a uh, ALSA plugin that gets the volume number sends it to whatever you your code want you want it to be but it used too many um, pins so I got the Pi VU meter source code and made my own module based on another one that was already there so this is the bar graph in use Now know I can make a VU meter using the regular GPI opens. While looking through the source code for the plugins, I discovered that I also had access to both the left and right channels. And so this got me thinking, why don't I work on a dual channel meter? You know, just one for the left side and one for the right side. So first I had to make some way to have that many LEDs. And then I came up with this little guy that I handmade. I decided to make this modular so if I wanted to, let's say, um, use different colors, what, or you know, I can just swap them out. Now, as you can see, this takes 16 GPIO pins. That only leaves me one pin unused. Well, I, I, and this is actually quite a bit more, but I don't want to use pins that I might need later for I squared C or SPI. You know, I just, I, I typically leave those alone unless I absolutely have to reuse them. So this is a C program that I wrote that, in, that will turn on each LED. So now I know I can control two sides. Before I test the Pi VU meter, I thought that we should actually have it more look more like a meter. So I soldered several different types that range from you know blue, green, yellow, red, just like the uh, ten bar graph. So let's test these out one at a time. I think this is going to be too bright because of the resistors I used. Okay. So, let's give this a try. Now, one thing I didn't know about was did this actually work? So, I separated the song into just the left and the right. So this is the left. Then 
for the right. Let's try a different one. Let's try this one. This looks pretty cool. Um, let's try this other one. So this is great and all. However, it uses every single pin except for one so I have one pin now why this is bad is because well let's just say I wanted to incorporate this into my mp3 player I need some pins for the LCD display I need pins for the buttons so this this isn't gonna work, help me much then I started thinking what about using a shift register so this is a shift register it has eight outputs and can be controlled with just three pins, GPIO. This particular one is a SR595. I'm not going to go too much detail into these because there's tons of videos out there that already do it. But basically, you set this one pin to, to low, and then you send it eight bits of data, and then you turn it back to high. And then it, using those eight bits, it knows which ones to turn on and off. And it does it very, very fast. So I'm going to be utilizing SPI interface of the Raspberry Pi. So this is what I created. It's not pretty on the back, but that's okay. So this has two shift registers. Now, one of the cool things about these are they can you can chain them. And so you can have, you know... 8, 16, you know, 32, any number of 8. And then still just control it with just the three wires of the Raspberry Pi, which I think is very, very cool. So let's first get the experiment working so that we can do SPI instead of using all these GPIOs. So this is our setup just for the SPI. As you can tell, see, we are only using three wires which is quite a change from all of this. So for the data pin of the shift register, we connect to MOSI, M-O-S-I. For the clock, we plug into the SPI clock. And then for the latch, we will plug into CE0. So this is the, my SPI example program and in use. And again, it's just very few wires controlling 16 LEDs at the same time. So the next thing to do is to put this all together and get it working for the VU meter. Okay, so this is the left channel. And then the right channel. So, this part is working. So the next thing I need to do is to modify my MP3 player, Raspberry Pi MP3 player, and add support for this new VU meter. So the next um, program I, I made um, uses the rotary encoder. So with the rotary encoder, it can spin infinitely in either direction. So this is going, I'm going to use this for um, a volume control. So in combination with the SPI program I wrote, if I turn it to the right, it should 
Yeah, yay! So if I turn left, down, right, it goes up. Then I also have it for the button to quit the program. So the next thing I had to do was the LCD display stuff. So I wrote this little program. So this is cool. So the next biggest total is to get all of this working with everything. The buttons, everything. So this is everything plugged in. Massive wires. But we have the buttons, the VU meter, the two LEDs, the LCD, and the rotary encoder. Now first, let's make sure everything works. So the SPI works. The LCD works. So now for the rotary encoder. So that works. So this is the end result. Uh, I've got this photo board from Amazon, the pretty cheap. So this is really pretty much exactly the same as the old one that I made. The only difference is I now have the SPI go through and piggyback through down to here so that I can do the view meter. So this is the program working. So this track I created demonstrates um, the left and right channels. So this song only has the right channel. And as you can tell, the volume control works. Let's go to the next song. So this is the left track. And this is both of them together.